Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me, and happy Monday. I am back with ghost stories and makeup. So, for those of you who don't know if this is your first time here, usually, but not for a while, on Mondays, I tell my subscribers ghost stories that they send in to me right here on this email address. Stories about ghosts, aliens, people because people are bad. Anything that is scary, send it right here. It can be just a normal email. It can be you vo voicely audioing. Fuck, help. An audio clip. It can be a video of you telling your story, whatever you want to do. Send it to me right there, and I will hopefully, at some point, read it out on this, on this series. So just a quick message to everyone who has missed this video series. I am sorry for dropping it. <laughs> And for all my confusion with like, what am I doing? Where am I going? I thought that this series was damaging my YouTube channel. Long story short, as much as I loved making them, I love a paranormal, I love anything scary, I love anything a little bit weird. Um, so I was like, as much as I love making it, not that many people watching it, although actually a lot of people do watch them. But long story short, I thought if not as many people are watching these videos, YouTube isn't gonna push out my other videos to people, therefore damaging my algorithm. I had a very, very amazing and really interesting meeting with someone from YouTube. And actually when it all came down to it, this series was good to have on my channel. So we are gonna be back every other week with ghost stories. Okay, shall we just get straight into it? So I always come up with a makeup theme. The makeup isn't like key throughout this, it's not like the main focus, but when I use a new product, I'll flash it up on the screen here for you so you can see what it is, and I'll link it down below, but I probably won't talk about it. So today's theme comes with a little bit of a backstory, right? I once had this friend who had this series on his YouTube channel, and um, it was about like ghosts and things like that, and he stopped making them and therefore the series died, um, and that person was me. So the theme this week is death from no ghost stories. <laughs> you know I'm so bad at coming up with these. Okay, let's get straight into it. Hey, let's do it. I have missed this so, so much. Our first story today is called Easter Sunday. Oh, I have to apologise because my monitor down here is down here at the moment. I haven't had time to fix it all up, so do apologise for me looking down. It says, Hi Robert, sending love and hugs from a small town called La Prior in Texas. I hope you are doing well and staying safe. Thank you, I hope you are too. One night I had just gotten home from work. At the time, I was still living with my parents, so I just happened to walk in just as my mum was watching ghost stories on the TV. I walked in and spoke with her for a while, then walked to my room. Shortly after walking to my room, I hear this horrific scream. I mean, it sent chills down my spine as soon as I heard it, because it sounded like a woman being tortured, and it was right outside my bedroom door. I looked out my door, terrified that I might see something I didn't want to see. But there was nothing. I heard my mum's TV come to a pause shortly after I heard a scream, and she asked if I was all right. I was confused about what I heard, but I said, yes, I'm fine, are you okay? Then I went to the living room where my mum was talking to me from and asked her if she heard the scream. And she said, yes, it was right there in the hallway and I honestly couldn't believe what I heard. So I said, it must have been your TV. You were watching ghost stories. So I rewinded the show that she was watching to see if I heard any kind of screaming, but there was no screaming on the show. We checked all of the rooms to see if we can find anything, but nothing was around other than myself, my son, and my mum. I should do makeup, right? I couldn't help but cry and panic after hearing that scream. I was so terrified. And I don't think I can ever forget that night. Yeah, that is, that is really scary. It's always like noises, like screams and stuff like that. Like you're always like, oh, I wonder if that's just like um, a fo fox sex. And you know, a scream isn't one of those noises where you can be like, oh, was it, it was a door creaking. You know, like I've never heard a door like scream before. Have I? No. Well, thank you so much for your story. I'm home alone tonight, I just realized, and this is... 
the other night I was convinced someone was in my house, but that's a whole other story. Okay, next up we have an audio story. Now these are great for me because it means I can quickly do some makeup that I haven't done. So if you're happy enough to send your ghost story in form of audio, please do. So this one is called Ghost on the Stairs. Hello, Robert. I love watching your videos. I get really wrapped up in the stories to almost to the point where I'm amazed that you finished your makeup and it looks so beautiful. Um, and you were able to do that while listening to creepy stories. But anyway, I al always personally felt like I didn't have any experiences with ghosts until recently. My ghost story begins in the early 2000s. I was in college and living at home. My bedroom was in the basement of our house, and the house was built in maybe about the 1920s. It was an open room, and I could see the stairs that were going up to the first floor from my bed. And sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night with the feeling like I was being watched. Not in a threatening way, just being observed. And I could usually see with the little light that was coming through the windows, a pair of legs of someone sitting near the top of the stairs. And sometimes I would also see a face like someone was sitting on the stairs, but leaning forward and just peering at me. It wasn't, it was freaky, but I would just think it was my mind playing tricks on me or maybe one of my younger siblings trying to play a joke on me and I would just turn over and go back to sleep. And I never mentioned any of this to anyone because one, I didn't want to encourage my cheeky siblings and two, because if it was imaginary, I didn't know how that would come across. <laughs> So I didn't talk about it. Anyway, years later, I moved out. My younger sister took over the basement room for a time until she moved out. And now our niece, who's a teenager, um, lives with my parents and she lived and she has the basement bedroom. Um, but recently my parents have sold the house. And so um, they're getting ready to move. And my sisters and, and niece and I were just reminiscing about our memories of the home. And the topic came up about ghost stories. Well, my initial reaction was, well, I don't have any ghost stories. Because, again, I thought my experience was imaginary. Until my niece, out of the blue, said, There's someone who sits on the stairs of the basement and watches me sleep. And then my younger sister immediately piped up with, Oh yeah, that happened to me too while I slept in the basement. And I nearly fell out of my chair when they said this, because... We had never talked about it before. I'd never mentioned this to them before. Uh, but now I know that I wasn't imagining the person on the stairs. Um, yeah, and that's my ghost story. Thank you for your wonderful videos. Thank you so, so much for that story. I do not know how you carried on sleeping in that room. I would have been out of there. I know what you mean, though, by you think your mind is, like, playing tricks on you, because I used to have this poster in my room, and oh, I would always see, like, the, the things on the poster moving. Obviously, they weren't. It was my mind, you know, um, doing whatever it does in the dark, but I totally get why you would have thought that was, you know, just your mind. That visual, that visual of the legs and someone's head going down, like, far enough that you could see. Oh, God. Right, I've done this blue really uneven. Bear with me. Okay, next up, as is custom, we have Marcus reading us some stories. Okay, let's go. Hi. This first story is called Caring Ghost Children. Hi, Robert. Love your videos. I've learned so many makeup tips from you. My mum is a nurse in my local hospital and told me this story. For confidentiality, I'm going to leave out the hospital's name. I'll make one up for you. Um, Puzz Tree Hospital Stick. So my mum works in a ward where really poorly elderly patients go and they can't have young visitors because it's not a safe environment for them. But keep this in mind during the story. When my mum first started, she had just qualified and this was her first job from uni. She worked night shifts most of the time. After getting used to how things ran, she started to notice things moving around, some small shadows, which she would blame on staff playing with her as she was new, maybe. When my mum would come off work, staff would tell her a patient kept complaining about someone laughing really loud at night, keeping them awake. My mum spoke to the patient and they would keep saying they were sick of the patient to their right having their granddaughter visiting and laughing really loud. My mum was confused and she asked what they meant. The patient said she kept seeing a little girl standing next to another patient, holding a forget-me-not flower. 
asking the patient if they were lonely and if they wanted to go play with her. My mum was very confused and put this down to the patient being confused. No children were allowed in this ward. During this night, the patient kept pressing the bells that would get the nurse's attention. My mum went over and the patient apologised for the constant complaining. She said the little girl was very nice and made her feel warm and at peace and that she was going to play with the little girl. My mum tucked the patient in bed and went back to her station. Within 15 minutes, the patient had died peacefully in their sleep. My mum spoke to a doctor in the morning and told him about the weird things the patient said before passing. The doctor smiled sadly and explained that originally this ward was for dying children when the hospital first opened. When a patient was on the verge of passing, they would mention seeing different children who appeared happy, playful, welcoming and always holding a flower. It seems that the children's spirits would come to the elderly patients and make them feel calm and at peace. The children would always ask if the patients were lonely, which some were, they had no family left. So the children would make sure they were not alone when they died. I found this a touching story and wanted to share it with you. This next story is called My Weird Story. Hi Robert, I really enjoy watching your videos. You help me improve my makeup game. I enjoy your ghost story video so much. I wanted to share my creepy but not ghost related story with you. My mum works for the German police, not as an officer, but she's involved if you get a speeding ticket. One day when I was around 16, she came home from work and said that she needs to talk to me, which already gave me the chills. I wasn't an easy teenager and thought she found out about something bad I did. She told me that the police station she works for and the public prosecutor's office in my city both got an email with my name in it. I was shocked and I asked what was it about. It was a really confusing email full of spelling mistakes and illogical sentences. Basically, it said that I run away from home and I'd be living in another city now. It also had my mother's name in it and that she works for the police, but they got her name wrong since she doesn't have the same last name as I have. The person that wrote the email called me Jesse Katz, which translates to Jesse Cat. My mum asked me if someone ever called me that, and if I know who could have sent that email. I denied everything. The officer that received the email showed it to my mum, since he knew her, and asked her if she has any idea who did it. The next day she talked to the officer again, and my mum told him what I said. He tried to find out who sent the email, but it was sent from an internet cafe, so it was impossible to know who did it. Luckily I didn't get any trouble for it, because the person wrote it like he was insane, and nobody took it seriously. To this day I'm still creeped out by it, and think about it often. Who would do that? Well, I can't answer that. Maybe Robert can, whose video this is, Makeup Brawl with Robert. Robert, back over to you for more makeup stories and ghosts. ghosts. Or doing ghosts. Ghost. Thank you, Marcus. I can answer exactly who that No, I have no idea. That is so creepy. Story one. Children, listen, if I was a dying old person and children kept coming to my bed, I would be pissed off. I wouldn't be like, oh, how soothing. I would be a little bit annoyed, I have to be honest with you. Especially if, you know, I was dying and I was just trying to get some sleep. And they're like, do you want to play? I'd be like, oh, do we have to now? I'm dying. Second story, stuff like that creeps me out. I don't know why, but like humans doing shit like that is terrifying and again like not knowing who it was like how like what like <laughs> what do you do what do you do with that information you know okay so our next story is called the bird cage Ooh. it says the bird cage <laughs> it says hi robert i hope you're well I've just recently found this series and it immediately reminded me of an experience I had when I was 16. So I thought I would share. Thank you. When I was younger, my mum and I used to visit my great aunt Mary every week to drop off her groceries and clean her flat. Her flat was full of little trinkets and ornaments that she would let me play with while my mum cleaned. One of which was a little vintage musical birdcage. I love to wind it up and have the tune play while I would watch the bird swing on its perch. Auntie Mary was my granddad's sister. And once he died, we became her closest family. As she had no children of her own. She always used to say that she didn't want to wait until she died to leave us her treasures because she wanted to see us enjoy them while she was alive. And because I loved a birdcage so much, it eventually came home with me. As the years went on and I got older, the birdcage got lost in the clutter of my teenage room and I had almost forgotten about it. 
This was until Mary eventually passed away, and her ashes were brought to our home. The day my mum came home with her ashes, I heard a noise from the top of my wardrobe. I recognised the sound immediately as the song from the birdcage, and my whole body went cold with a realisation. I was so shell-shocked, I had to call my mum into my bedroom to pull down the box where the noise was coming from. The birdcage was at the bottom of a box of old toys, with the music playing loudly and the bird swinging. It had been years since it was last wound up. I'm a huge sceptic when it comes to supernatural goings on, but this was way too much of a coincidence for me to explain away. My mum and I both agreed, if Auntie Mary had been there that evening, She wasn't there to hurt us. Oh, cute. I like that story. That is so cute. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Like, she, you know, she wanted you to enjoy those little things. And then to make something that you enjoyed, like, the way to communicate with you, I think there's no, no harm intended. That was so nice. Thank you so much for that story. I'm going to quickly finish up my eyes, and then we are going to watch some TikToks. Okay, let's do it. Let's take a look at some TikToks. Uh, yeah, here we go. Imagine coming home to this. What? Usually I'll be like, it's string. Can people, can, is there a way people do that? (gasps) That's insane. That house looks haunted though. It gives me, it gives me a bit of an eerie vibe. Okay, tell me a story about something that you cannot explain. Buckle up y'all. It was my 13th birthday party. I was having a slumber party with some girls at my parents' house. We decided at some point in the night that we were gonna play Bloody Mary. We decided to play it in my parents' room because they had the biggest mirror in the house and we could fit all of us in the mirror. Nothing happened. Uh, We moved on, watched some scary movies, ate pizza, whatever. But by the end of the night, since we had watched scary movies and played Bloody Mary, we were all freaked out. So we decided we would sleep in shifts. So real quick to understand, um, in my parents' house, if you're in the living room, you can see up the stairs and then you can see the entire upstairs hallway. My parents' bedroom is at the end of the hallway upstairs. So I was in the living room, it was my turn to stay awake, and I look upstairs and out of my parents' room, I see a tall, skinny woman in a white dress with long black hair floating out of my parents' room. She's not walking, she's floating out of their room and down the hallway. She's moving slow as fuck, coming down the hall, starts floating her ass down the stairs. I buried my head in a pillow and just like blacked out. When I finally got the balls to take the pillow away and open my eyes, she was gone. That is not the point of this story. I mean, it's half of it, but fast forward nine years. We are on a beach trip. It's our family, um, some family friends of ours, a bunch of people, and we're all by a campfire. Everyone's pretty drunk. They start telling ghost stories as us white people usually do. I was gonna keep my little story to myself because my family doesn't believe in that stuff and they were gonna think I was crazy. All of a sudden, my dad starts talking. This is his story. So he says, this was nine years ago. He said it was the middle of the night, he woke up and there was a woman with long black hair in a white dress sitting at the foot of his bed. He thought it was my mom, so he said her name multiple times, then looked next to him. My mom was sleeping. Eventually, the woman just floated off the bed to a standing position and floated her ass out of the room. I had genuinely started to convince myself that I made the entire thing up when I was 13. Now, I had only told that story to two other people in the world and they were both sitting at that campfire one was my sister and one was my now husband all of the blood drained from my face they both are staring at me jaws on the floor just knowing that i didn't make that up and that my dad my dad does not believe in this stuff so just knowing that my dad saw this thing too weirdest feeling ever weirdest thing ever ew Oh my god, that validation of a story, especially from some, uh, like when you were a child, is 
up. Makes it even scarier, but makes it better at the same time. Okay, let me finish up my eyes and then we'll be, mark my eyes, put on some lashes and then we'll be done. Okay, well, thank you so, so much for joining me. Thank you for all your amazing, amazing stories. Like I said, you can go ahead and send them here to this email address. Sorry for the like not knowing what was going on, but we are back now every other Monday. I really, really appreciate your support of this series for those of you who have asked me about it, asked when it's coming back, telling me your stories about how you watch it with your family, your partners, your what, friends. It actually means a lot to me that people who maybe aren't usually into makeup content would watch this because the paranormal is something I'm so into and I love that you love it, you know. The makeup's in there just because I'm trying to stay relevant to myself. But yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. And I will see you very, very soon. Bye.